Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from unboxgraphics.com and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a breakdown of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile video, um, Interception, Thad, Aegis, um, the ground-based ballistic missile defense system, whatever video you wanna call it from the Real Engineering YouTube channel. Let's just go ahead and jump right into After Effects and take a look at what we're uh, dealing with here. So uh, these are the missiles that are being launched from North Korea, as well as you can barely see there will be a, um, a missile coming from a boat. So I'm just gonna play this out for you and kind of describe it as we go. So you see two missiles. Um, coming out of uh, North Korea, a zooming into the Aegis boat, and then a missile launch. So um, these here are just simple lens flares, and they're really, really awesome. I'll show you how they work. Um, but they're built into After Effects, and, uh, and then there's just some smoke, and it's pretty simple. It's actually very, very simple. But uh, I think the effect is really cool, especially with sound effects, which in the final v version there was sound effects, but it was so low that um, you actually couldn't really hear them. So I'm just gonna play it out for you so you could hear kind of what this sounded like um, if you had headphones on, but I just cranked up the volume. Okay, so coming back to this video, let's take a look at some of these effects here a little bit more deeply. So the zoom in here is, is very simple. Basically, we're just zooming in and adding a ton of motion blur, but also a slight mask around the video. So I believe it is, let's see if we can't find the video. I think it's this video right here. It is. So if I open this up, you could see that there are some masks and some scaling. So it, it almost looks like the boat kind of we're zooming into the boat in, in the ocean. So um, it wasn't the perfect, I mean, I think that this was a really good effect, but I don't think that it was executed absolutely perfectly. Um, it could have been smoother, but it's definitely something that I wanna work on in the future. And speaking with Brian, it sounds like, you know, he, he was pretty impressed with it as well. Um, but it just needs to be a little bit smoother. And I think that um, we can we can improve it in the future so, it's, so it looks a little bit more natural. You don't get the boxing effect. So. That was really simple. It was just a scale as well as a mask with an expansion um, when while it's zooming in, while the null object is zooming into that area. So I believe this is attached to null 14, which you could see here if I press you on the keyboard, um, that is zooming in. So uh, pretty simple, but uh, pretty neat effect to blend in kind of two different types of video. So we have the animation and then an animation from Raytheon, for example, that we were able to just blend together that I thought was um, pretty cool. So I mean, adds a little bit more realism to the content because you're looking at an animation and then it kind of transitions into something that is more realistic. So um, that's the first one. And for these missiles, I'm actually gonna show you um, how it was done probably on a separate composition, but there is one thing that I wanna show you. I'm gonna make this full screen. Um, and it was when they intersect or intercept, um, it's a very large composition. Um, it kind of has a big glow as well as, as some smoke kind of being, uh, launched in front of the craft because, you know, momentum is, is keeping some of the objects as it explodes moving. And let me just show you how that was done. Let's see if I can't find it here in the composition. There's the interceptor, missile, flame, satellite, satellite beam. It's here somewhere. I think it's right here. So I there is three copies of this and they are set to add. Um, but I'll show you what this looks like actually in its own composition. It's basically a bunch of spheres that are scaling from full scale down to zero. But let me reduce the quality here but it has an echo attached, which which gives them a tail to them. So in a tutorial on the channel, we covered echoes, but um, I it, it think for this example, it worked absolutely perfectly, especially when you set the, the mode to add, because let's see if I can't find the animation. Um, can't seem to find it now. But um, with the smoking effect, I think it looked really cool. So I'm just gonna show you how I did the missile launch. So I'm just gonna create a new composition here. Um, 
Comp 8 is fine. Uh, let's see, what was the composition setting? 1600 by 1200, that was fine. And I'm just gonna create a new solid layer, make it black. I'm just gonna show you how easy it was to do. So, first thing I did was I created a path. So let's say a path looking like that. Um, I did want it to look like the missile was kind of launching sh straight up and then kind of curving. So this, the color of this shape doesn't really matter because I'm just gonna be using its path information. And then I make it, made a same path, a similar path with an intersecting line. So that way that's the interceptor. And again, the information doesn't really matter, um, whether it's black or white. Um, that's not of my concern right now. What is my concern here is the contents in here, which I can um, gather this path information by opening these up and setting keyframes for the path. So that's how I use, that's how I how I gain path information. Um, but uh, your mileage may vary. So for the missiles themselves, it's just a simple lens flare. Um, but I just made them really small. So I created a, an adjustment layer and in the effects and presets, I just searched for lens flare. And I added that to the adjustment layer and you can see here that, you know, I'm sure you could kind of already tell how this is going to look. But what's great about this is it does, it creates already all of these lens flare effects, which really, really add to the overall effect. Um, when you scale this down, or when you scale the brightness down, you can see you lose a little bit of it, but it looks much more like the, the end of a missile. And then on the brightness, I just added a quick little effect here called wiggle. And I don't remember the exact ones I used. I think I used maybe, take a look at that. I think that's a little bit much, but basically this allows it to wiggle um, the brightness amount. Uh, that might be too little. I can even open up the other one and kind of see what we were at. So that's obviously too much. Let me just open up that other composition and just copy exactly what we used. this one here I think it is so the flame has a wiggle on the brightness and it was 10 comma 3 so coming through here I'm just gonna do that and let's take a look at what that looks like and you can see there that it is Blinking. So that's how you get the blinking effect. That's pretty simple. And then for the, um, to make sure it goes along the path, I just attach the flame center. Um, actually, I didn't attach the flame center. I copied the path information on the shape layer, which would be this one here. Just copy that information and I pasted it on the flame center. So now the the flare flies across the screen and you can see the little bit of lens flare down here also moves, which is really cool. Um, and then I just uh, basically smooth this out to make it, you know, so the missile was launching slower and was gaining ex speed over time. And um, so to do that, I just selected these and I used my tool here, um, or you can use the graph editor. So let's take a look. Obviously that's way too short. So you would want to expand this out maybe a couple seconds. So it's launching and it's moving and it's getting up to speed. And then I did the exact same thing so I could just duplicate this layer and I want to do the exact same thing but with the other path information. and then I could just delete the other paths. So 
Let's take a look what that looks like. And by the way, you may even want to delay this slightly. So the missile launches and then the interceptor launches later. But you can see that they actually won't intercept. So you will need to adjust these so they do. Just like that. And even if you wanted to make the interceptor a little bit faster, you could do that as well. So boom, right when they intersect, that's when you want to stop their positions and increase the brightness. So I would just set brightness characteristics here for both and increase their brightness really fast. And then make the opacity go to zero. So when you actually see them intersect, now you would spend more time to make that look a little bit smoother, but that's the that's the general gist of 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 how that that's going to work. So um, for these now, I'd make I turn these into smoke trails. So I remove the fill, I reduce the thickness, and I add something called turbulent turbulent displace. And I can just attach it to both of these here. But basically, if I decrease the size, but increase the amount, and mess with the complexity, and add a blur, I'm just gonna use the fast blur here. You might use something a little bit better if this was a real composition. And then, just to add some evolution so the so the smoke looks like it's moving a little bit over time. And now it trim paths. So I would just open this up, add a trim paths. Go to the start. What trim paths does is it is it draws the line. So I might go there. And then there, right there, and add the same smoothing, and then reduce the transparency over time. So just from that, you could quickly see what this is going to look like. And it is processor heavy, so um, these flares certainly don't like that and there's something that appears to be wrong and I think I know what it is. Let's see here. Let's open this up. So what I would probably do for that, to solve that problem, is just make these all the same. So I don't mess with the, uh, with any of the additional values. And for some reason, that still isn't tracking it properly. But, you know, you can kind of fudge it a little bit. Um, and I know the reason why it doesn't really, it's not really that important why, but it's because I actually trimmed the length of the explosion by adding keyframes, which I should have probably waited to do that until after. But you can see, you could just kind of fudge it a little bit and it still works. Um, last thing I did was I changed the type of flare for the missile. And I also reduce the brightness for the interceptor. So that way it looks a little bit smaller. 
and it looks a little bit more like an interception missile. Um, and again, you would you would probably spend more time on the smoke. You would spend more time on basically every piece of this. Um, but that's kind of the general effect. And then from here on, you would just smooth it all out. Um, add your additional effects here um, on the smoke. So you would start with some spheres. Duplicate this a bunch of times. Set position keyframes. And then move these out. So this would give the impression of an explosion. see what that'll look like just like that when you add the when you add the echo you could already see that you're on your way to getting the effect And now I would just add this to my composition. We scale it down a bunch. And then add the same effect I added to the line, but I would add it to that and I would decrease the opacity and I'd maybe duplicate this a few times and change this to add and kind of move it over and rotate it a little bit. And then from there on, I would just kind of blend it more together. So let's see what that looks like. So obviously the timing's not correct, but you can kind of get an idea. If you just put in another 5,000 hours into that, that would... <laughs> It would look like how it looked in this <laughs> or that or uh, whichever composition it is. It doesn't matter anymore. But uh, yeah, you put more time into it and you can see here that I, you know, I made the trail a little bit, a little bit less. And I, that's through a shape layer, uh, masking out the, the tail. But um, that's just kind of a, a general look at, at this. Uh, I did go into more detail. I know people had asked to kind of see a little bit more about how things were done. So that's the reason why I showed it. Um, even though I didn't put, I mean, if I were to replicate this, it would obviously have taken me uh, maybe like 20 to 30 hours. And I don't think you want to watch a 20 or 30 hour video. Maybe you do. But um, anyways, guys, that's just how we did it in this video. Let us know in the comments down below other stuff you want to see us um, kind of go behind the scenes. And um, as always, thank you. We appreciate your support on Patreon at the Real Engineering Patreon account. Anyways, guys, it's been Mike. Thanks for watching.